My name is Bria Elmore, and I am a business owner of two businesses, Only You Athletics, where I do basketball training, and Only You Clothing Brand. Um, and Only You stands for only person that can stop you is you. Just believing in yourself, knowing that you can and you will, and allowing your energy to carry you or attract whatever you want in life. So. Early life, my mom, my dad, and my older brother. Um, and I just kind of followed in his footsteps. He was an active person in sports, you know, football, baseball, all of that. And I was like, well, like, I don't just want to sit back and do nothing. So I started off, you know, with cheerleading. And then I picked up the basketball and ever since then, I just, I never put it down, but yeah. The importance of the relationship with my dad, um, he really helped me grow that competitive edge. Uh, we'd be in the backyard almost every day, you know, until until the sun was down. And sometimes he would score and he'd throw the ball across the yard and it'd make me so mad, you know? He's like, go get it. I'm like, not a dog, you know what I'm saying? But I had to go get it and I had to play. So it really helped me like be competitive and really build like that, that grit in me. Cheerleading, oh, I loved it. Uh, I loved it, uh, the competitions, um, but I just gradually grew out of it, you know? Um, so I was like, yeah, I think I just wanna you know, do basketball, but I still have that love for Chile, yeah. COVID started and they sent us home and I'm just like, okay, what am I gonna do? You know, I, I kept having thoughts of, okay, what do you like to do? What do you like? And I was like, okay, I like to eat, stuff like that. I was like, well, I wanna be a chef. So I'm like, but I like to get dressed. I was like, but I need a message behind my brand. And um, when I lost my mom to breast cancer, one thing she always just tell me growing up was only person that can stop you is you. So I just took that and I ran with it, you know, and I started November 5th of 2020 and I just never stopped. And it really helped me grow spiritually, mentally, just in life. One of the things that I've carried over from basketball to my business career is leadership. When you're an athlete, you have to have that motivation to get up and do it. Nobody's gonna tell you to get in the gym. Nobody's gonna tell you to, you know, like, if you love it, you do it. So just taking that mindset and shifting it to my business, it's like, okay, well, I didn't know anything about, you know, building a brand or doing this or doing that. So I would just wake up and I would do my research and I would just be on it until I knew it. So the letters, oh, the letters, the letters were coming. Honestly, I hated it. I hated the recruiting process. I hated taking the visits. I'm a, I'm in my shell, you know, and it was like having to break out and talk to these coaches. They call and I'm just like, oh my God, it was kind of overwhelming, you know? Um, but at the same time, yeah, I enjoyed it. The first offer I received, I couldn't tell you. I don't even remember. <laughs> I do remember that Memphis, when they came, they did a house visit. And it was so funny, because when they left, I told my brother, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to Memphis. You know, I was like very headstrong on that, but I was so tired of the recruiting process. I was like, let me go ahead and commit. So it really wasn't a thing of, I want to go because I like this school. It was a thing of, I'm going to go because I'm tired of the recruiting process. I had gotten this, this card from Memphis and I put it on my dresser. And one day I got home from practice and I just looked at it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to Memphis. You know, I feel like had it been another card, I probably would have selected that school, but yeah, that was really it. It was just, I saw the card. I was like, okay, Memphis it is. The journey as a four-year athlete at the University of Memphis, I would say it was one of the toughest journeys of, of my life uh, thus far. Um, just coming in as a freshman, um, I came in really confident and then the confidence fell. You know, it, it dropped and I was just like, dang, like I'm questioning, can I play? And um, I really kind of lost my love for the game after my sophomore year. To me personally, I feel like there's a difference between coaching and then tearing a the player down. And I feel like as a lot of our freshmen, we had like six freshmen in our class and we always felt like we were getting torn down. And it was just like, it was tough. It was a battle. Every time in practice, like it would be the upperclassmen versus the underclassmen. No, we, we're going at it because we want to play. I went home, got in the gym, got my confidence back in junior and senior year. It was great years. Um, but those first two years, it was rough. It was really rough, but got through it. But tough, for sure. Losing my mom. I was like, I need to talk to somebody because it wasn't just, it was losing my mom and then having to deal with everything that came with, you know, basketball. And I'll never forget a moment just going into, um, cause my grades started to slip. My grades were slipping. I wasn't doing, I wasn't going to class. I wasn't doing work cause I just wasn't here. I, well, I wasn't there at the time. And I remember just going into the office and he just told me, he was like, try to bottle that up and put it in a box. I'm just like, How, you know, I felt so like disregarded and disrespected in a sense. And after that, I just kind of, I, I checked out and I was like, let me go to counseling. You know, so I did that and it helped, but I still struggled. I talked to my brother a lot. You know, we always, you know, talk about it, bring up a memory. Um, but going, moving forward, it was really hard. I guess I felt numb for a very long time. It was finally like when I started my clothing line, I feel like that's when I was able to come back. And mind you, I lost my mom in 2016. I didn't start my brand until 2020. So that's four years of just feeling numb through life and not really knowing how to navigate it. Now I know how to journal and go outside and do different things to get myself back to myself. I would definitely say journal, write it down because holding that stuff in, it doesn't hurt anybody but you. Um, so get it out, write it down. Or sometimes if you don't want to write, sometimes I'll just prop up my camera 
and I'll just talk, you know, and sometimes I'll cry, I'll smile, I'll laugh, but I'm getting those emotions out. Meditate too, definitely meditate, sit with yourself, get your answers from yourself. Yeah, it's hard sometimes to go and get that advice from other people because you can sometimes get your answers from yourself if you just pay attention and listen. If you're not happy, nothing is worth your mental health. So leave, you know, it's not other people's opinions don't matter. Like if you're not happy, go. And that's what I do now moving forward. If I'm not happy, I'm leaving, period. One thing about me is I love to see people smile and just having a good time. I'll crack a joke, you know, I'll just come into a room with a smile and and um, I really want to help kids, you know, because growing up where I grew up, we didn't really have like that facility up the street that we could go to and hoop. So that's one of my biggest goals is to bring a gym to my community, you know, and just be that positive black woman that a lot of kids probably don't, you know, don't get to see where I'm from. So really just this positive light that just wants to see people shine and be great. No, I feel like I haven't found my purpose because life is a journey and I'm always learning new things nearly, you know, every day. And I feel like nobody just has one purpose. I feel like we're here to just serve and do what we can to uplift people and bring and bring them up. I feel like the more I go on my journey, the more I'll step into different roles of my purpose, but having just one purpose, no, I don't feel like I have just one or I haven't just found just one, yeah. I'm about to sign a contract to go to Bora, Sweden and um, play another professional season, so I'm excited. My name is Bria Elmore, professional basketball player and owner of Only You Athletics and Only You Clothing brand, and this is my purpose to be heard.